Welcome to Crypto Finder. Today we're here at EdCon, the Ethereum Developers Conference, and I'm sitting with John Pacific, otherwise in his community known as Tux, who is a cryptography engineer at New Cypher. Tell us a bit about what this what this is and where it's going. Uh, so, New Cipher is a uh, we're, we're our company builds uh, cryptographic infrastructure for privacy preserving protocols and applications. Um, so, our, we have two main product offerings right now. One is our proxy re encryption network, which is kind of like a distributed key management system, but it actually has a bit more than that, and it's actually a lot has a lot of really cool stuff. Um, our other offering right now is more experimental on the research side. It's called New FHE, which is a fully homomorphic encryption library that it runs on the GPU. So we believe that to be the world's fastest FHE library right now. It runs 100 times faster than the competitors. Okay. Um, that, wow, that sounds like a lot, and it sounds super complex. <laughs> um, I'm trying to think where we should start. Can you explain homomorphic uh, cryptography to us? Yeah, at a high level, it would so, be awesome. So, homomorphic encryption is uh, relatively straightforward as a as a concept. Um, it's the ability to compute unencrypted data. Okay. Um, so, essentially, with fully homomorphic encryption, we can perform arbitrary computations on encrypted data, meaning that we can perform you know full logical circuits and full and, and logical evaluations on any on whatever we want on encrypted data, right? Then there's other forms of homomorphic encryption like that are called partial homomorphic encryption. And that's what a lot of protocols use, uh, such as PIE, uh, which allow you to do some stuff like, like only addition or only multiplication, right? So uh, those will only let you do like additions on encrypted data or multiplications on encrypted data. But fully homomorphic encryption is the combination of the two that allows you to perform both addition and multiplication. Um, there's other schemes there too as well. Uh, they're called somewhat homomorphic encryption, which means that you can perform uh, arbitrary computations up to a point before you can't perform anymore. Uh, those have really cool benefits, uh, and they can be leveraged to turn into fully homomorphic encryption uh, systems. Uh, but with, uh, uh, FA with FHE itself, there are some drawbacks to those kinds of things, uh, but they do make really interesting protocols. Okay. Uh, what does FHE stand for? Fully homomorphic encryption. Oh, of course. Sorry. Yeah. No, no, that, that's <laughs> fine. That's fine. I think it's, I mean, we're edging in the, the sort of emerging pinnacle of, of how you can apply cryptography, I think. Um, and for me, especially, I'm sure some of our viewers as well, like what are, um, what's the daydream of what an application of this looks like? Sure. Perhaps even extending it to like an end user that doesn't actually have to even experience yep. what's going on in the background. So there's a few really, really cool things. Um, I think we at, we at New Cypher, what our biggest research focus is right now is trustless, uh, fully homomorphic encryption. Okay. Uh, so it's, it's be, the ability to be able to apply FHE in trustless areas. So that is, uh, we don't necessarily trust you know, the person performing the computation, so we need to actually make sure that all things involved in that are secure and that there's no damage that can be done. So that's the one thing that we are um, actively researching there in FHE. Um, there's plenty of other FHE companies, but most of them are not really focused on that, and so we're trying to apply it in those trustless areas. Um, so some use cases like that, and especially in the trustless space, are uh, uh, like privacy-preserving smart contracts. That's a possibility okay. that we're looking into. Um, other ones, some other really cool uh, use cases are things like genetic testing. Because usually genetic data and genomic data is, is very private. And that it can, in the, theoretically in the future, be used to discriminate against you. And so people right now are taking, are warning, uh, privacy experts are now warning uh, many people who are you know, sending off their genetic data to you know, Ancestry.com or these people yep. to get this genetic testing done. Okay. Um, they want to be able to perform that testing on encrypted data so that they don't reveal their genomic data to the person performing the computation. Okay, so that, that's amazing. I think that that actually makes, this it now comes together as like a single picture. So yeah. rather than sending your genetic information to a company like Ancestry, where they then have who you are and your genetic data, 
um, and match that against the other bank of information that they have, you could effectively get the same outcome of learning more about your ancestry and learning more about perhaps uh, risks that you might be predisposed to yep. without ever having to worry about anyone else getting visibility on that. Is that? Yeah, that's right. Wow. Because then you can have your, you know, your, the gene sequence you want to be tested and they can simply search through the genes without ever knowing what they're looking at. Right. Right. And then there's even further extensions from that where we can then use anonymity so that they can do the testing yep. and but not know who essentially were there they are testing. Really cool. I that way nobody can in the future come and say, We want so and so's genetic data. Yep. And I think we can all get a bit um worried about how that can play out. Yeah. So um, yeah, the trustless nature of, of FHE is really important for those kinds of things. Absolutely. Yeah. Um in terms of how it can be used in business, um I guess is it right to say that you get the benefit of having a public blockchain um, and leveraging that while also then being able to do private enterprise? Is that something available? Um, so New Cypher, we are investigating enterprise applications of our, right now, our proxy re-encryption network. And that's our main product offering. Uh, so FHE is more of our uh, experimental research kind of thing. Okay. Um, but so with our main product offering, I think that is something we're very, very interested in exploring right now. But with FHE as well, we are seeing a lot of enterprise uh, interest in that. So if people are interested in that, they can please they can reach out to us, and we can see if there's a good match for, uh, you know, uh, what their applications for it. Okay, fantastic. And how do they reach out to you? Where can people um, learn more and find out? Yeah, you can send us an email at hello at newcipher.com, um, or you can email me at john at newcipher.com. Uh, and I will make sure you uh, get situated. Yep. And you've also got a Telegram community. Uh, is, yeah. that, is that where you're most active? Uh, no, actually. Or? That's where a lot of our like our, our public community facing side where we talk about you know our, our PR releases and things like that. And that's where it kind of gets discussed. Our main uh, you know avenue for communication is actually Discord. Um, so we have a public Discord. Okay. Uh, and we do all of our development in the open. So it's literally like walking into an engineering office in, on Discord because we always uh, talk there. Fantastic. Um, yeah. That's so, really cool. Yeah. They I can join that. It's on our website. If you go to newcipher.com, you'll find the Discord link. Yep. Okay. That's really exciting. And um, I guess for, for people that are looking to, um, to, to learn more, is there documentation? Is there, is there a website that they can go and literally maybe watch videos of examples? Yeah. And yeah. Um, so... Uh, we have several uh, videos on YouTube of various demos, like yep. the one I did at EdCon today yep. uh, on it. Uh, one of our engineers, Justin uh, Miles Holmes, uh, gives a very good demo where he usually plays his instruments and, and it actually is relatively getting well-known right now for being that flute guy at, uh, <laughs> at uh, Ethereum conferences. So I, I would encourage people, if they're interested in uh, learning about New Cypher, to read and watch uh, our our uh, articles and stuff. Uh, as for documentation, yeah, we have docs.newcipher.com, which is uh, the documentation for our code base. Uh, so people can actually go and, and read the documentation, figure out how to use New Cipher in their own applications. Um, if they ever have any questions, again, join our Discord and ask us questions, and yep. the community will actually help you too. So you've told us about uh, FHE. Um, can you tell us a bit more about proxy ring encryption, which is the, the largest portion of what you guys are doing? Yeah, so proxy ring encryption is another form of public key cryptography. Uh, it, people are very familiar with uh, the traditional narrative that goes along with that, where Alice and Bob both have a private key and a public key, and Alice can encrypt data for Bob's public key, and Bob can decrypt it using his private key. Yep. So proxy ring encryption adds a third party to this mix. Um, it adds somebody like that is just literally a third party, like a proxy. Uh, we call this person Ursula in our network because U stands for untrusted, and we don't want to trust this proxy. Okay. Um, so I'll dive into how we can make that trustless. Awesome. Um, but uh, proxy re-encryption essentially allows you to encrypt data in one key. So we have a encrypted data on the output of that encryption, and then we can transform the ciphertext, the encrypted data, to be decryptable under another key without okay. ever decrypting the data in between that process using something called a re-encryption uh, re key, okay. which is a component of Alice's private key and Bob's public key. Okay, let's uh, slow that down for me. I'm, we'll, we'll unpack it bit by yeah. bit because I'm sure I'm not the only one that's no, it's trying a, to wrap my head around it. I, I get public and private key um, yeah. encryption. And I think that's fairly well understood um, being foundation, foundational to what Bitcoin uses. 
Um, let's let's. Yeah, sure. So uh, proxy re-encryption, essentially, when we have uh, Alice, for example, she can actually the way to the best way to think of this is uh, access control. So a better way to think of prox of New Cipher's proxy re-encryption network is an access control mechanism. Okay. So that way, uh, Alice can en can encrypt her own data. It's her data, so yep. it's encrypted with her keys. Okay. And then she can grant access to other people as needed to that data. So normally with public key encryption, you have to encrypt one for each individual party who you want to receive it, but they can always you know, decrypt it later on. Okay, yep. And then you have to send that data off and store it somewhere for them where they can probably access it. Um, with proxy re-encryption, now Alice can encrypt that data using her own public key, but then grant access to that data. So in the case of like, uh, say you want to store some uh, encrypted data on IPFS, and you only want to encrypt it once and store it once. And that way, you, using proxy re-encryption, you can grant access to that data without ever having to re decrypt it and re-encrypt re it over and over again. Right. That way, we can actually just transform the ciphertext uh, to be decryptable by whoever you grant access to. OK, cool. And just for reference, IPFS is the International uh, Planetary Filing System, which is basically a decentralized uh, database where you can store files, like a, like a decentralized Google Dropbox in some respects. So the, uh, what we would do there is have one file that we encrypt and we grant access to multiple people, yeah. as opposed to having to upload uh, unique files for each of my friends to access. Exactly. OK. Yeah, so it's more, it's more scalable. Yeah. Uh, a good way uh, for people who may be more familiar with this is people traditionally use something called public key infrastructure uh, to handle these kinds of things. Um, but using with New Cypher, we've actually constructed a way to replace public key infrastructure and build a more trustless variant of it. Awesome. Uh, that way, we can actually utilize a privacy layer for decentralized applications. Uh, so then, people it, early early on, we used to call this something like HTTPS for uh, the decentralized web. However, that's not really the case as much anymore, and it's kind of a weird way of thinking about it. But it is a good way of kind of wrapping your head around what New Cipher is is intending to do: is build these protocols and app uh, so that we can actually, uh, you know. Uh, builds this huge privacy layer for any uh, decentralized application. Yeah, and there's loads of reasons for why that's important. That's really awesome stuff. Yeah, I think um, check out the website, uh, have a look at the documentation, look at the uh, in the community channels if you have any questions. Uh, I've heard that these guys are quite responsive. You'll be able to reach out to their team. You can see everything that they do. Ugh. You can see everything that they're doing on the Discord. And of course, uh, I think this is an area that you might want to if you're looking at getting into the technical side dive right into. Awesome stuff. Look, I think it's really exciting. Reach out to these guys in their community chats on their website. You'll find all the documentation if you're interested to really get involved and get deep into the absolute pinnacle of how you can apply cryptography to build out new applications in ways that we can utilize our privacy uh, at scale. Really cool stuff. Thanks very much for coming on the show. Yeah, thank Pleasure you. Pleasure to have you. Yeah. See you next time. Yeah, see you.